This should answer the questions that I've been fielding all off season. When was Inside LAFC podcast going to return? We had to dot the I's and cross the T's, as you could see by our incredible animation there. I had to get all the players to agree to, to do a cameo in there. If you're visually watching the podcast, to our audio listeners, well, you can, you'll can you certainly get your chance, I'm sure, at some point. But let me do the introductions. Welcome into Inside LAFC podcast. I am Max Bretos. A reminder to rate, review, download, subscribe, tell a friend about this podcast. And I truly mean it. I meant it before, but even more so because we are entering a new era of this pod. And I am here now. We're at the LAFC Performance Center as a bit of a kickoff, but once the season starts, it will look very different. We will have every week a different LAFC legend and alumni, call it what you will, to join us here to look back at the history of the club, some famous moments, and to, to check in what they're thinking about what LAFC is doing. And then we'll be joined by some special guests uh, in uh, the interview segment with current members of LAFC. This week, we kick it off the man at the top, LAFC general manager and co-president, John Thorrington. It will be a comprehensive conversation to talk about the offseason, the expectations. We'll go player by player. And my goodness, you know, I mean, I was preparing for this. And anyone that has any doubts about the intentions of this club, and I know every year we everyone's nervous based on social media, but LAFC always come through with flying colors, showing their ambition and 2024 is no different. It's much bigger than just Hugo Loris, as you have seen. The return of Eduardo Atuesta. We'll talk to John Thornton in detail about the first return player in LAFC history. And this is really important, right? Because this shows growth. This is where you can start comparing yourself to some of the big clubs uh, in the world. Like, you know, we're seeing that at Chivas. Chicharito started down there coming back. This carries weight. It means a lot. It means a lot to the supporters. And it certainly means a lot uh, to uh, people who are very close to the club working within, too, because you, it's all about relationships. We certainly know that. So we'll talk to John about that, but expect everyone to be joining us here in Inside LAFC consistently every week where you get your pods, where all pods are available, Inside LAFC podcast. And again, this is not going to be – it's not going to just me be joining you from the top. We will have our LAFC legends every week starting next week. With Stephen Beta, sure. I know if you love Beta, you know everyone loves Beta, uh, one of the originals who will be joining us, and I'm excited about that conversation. He'll appear periodically in several names that uh, may surprise you through the season. I'm just happy to be here because I, I got to tell you, so many people are going, when's the pod going to start? We, we, we started when we started, and we want to make sure we have all our ducks in a row and we come out with an impact, and we certainly will with our interview with John Thorrington. I'm amazed how this club is growing. And I just wanted to share a story because every time I go to a concert, you know I'm a big concert goer. Every time I go to a concert, I meet at least one LAFC supporter. So I went to see Sweet and Tender Hooligans in the Terragram Ballroom downtown LA. They're Smith's cover band uh, with uh, a very, very deep local tie. Many, everyone's seen it. It was my first show. Two fans for LAFC there. Got to greet them. So I love it. So everywhere you go, you see the jersey. We got the new jersey launched. Get your gear. Go to L, uh, go to the HQ. Go to the source. Get your name on the back. Everyone loves the new jersey. It is spectacular. It'll get you through the velvet ropes if you want to go to a club. If you're into that, I'm too old these days for that. But I'm just saying, you could dress like that and you'll see the doors open. So enough of my yapping, right? I'm just really pumped. We have so much great stuff in store for you all season. So check the LAFC handles. Apple TV will have a presence there. Just if you don't have your subscription, and obviously if you're a season ticket holder, you can get a, a fast pass into that, so to speak. MLS season pass on Apple TV. Already great content there, and the games start Saturday. LAFC, Sounders, we know that's a very special matchup for everyone out there. I, I did not ask this to John, but I wonder if it's a conversation we could have here to kick off the podcast. Where does that victory in the postseason rank? in the history of LAFC. It's a tricky one, right? We certainly know what is number one. That was MLS Cup, no doubt about it. It's got to be a victory. I think that second leg against Leon has a claim to be number two. Perhaps the games in that abbreviated uh, CONCACAF Champions League, now Cup in 2020, where they beat America and they beat Cruz Azul, those would apply. I, I truly believe the win at Seattle, though, is your 
clear cut number two. Not clear cut, but not arguably your number two. What do you think? What was the second best win in uh, LAFC history? We have so many options. This is just growth for the club. New stadium ready to go. And we're all going to see you out there Saturday. If you can't get there, you can see it on uh, MLS Season Pass. It's an afternoon game, a little early evening game. So check your local listings. Make sure you soak it all in and we hit the ground running. Without further ado, we'll be right back here on Inside LAFC Podcast. Our first guest for the 2024 season. Start big. John Thornton, who will answer all our questions, as he always does, always up front. And I can promise you he'll get you excited for the season and what lies ahead in future marketplaces. LAFC is cooking. We'll be right back. And we return here on Inside LAFC Podcast, and we certainly want to begin at the top to get uh, an overview of LAFC's offseason as they prepare for the opener against the Seattle Sounders. So we're joined by co-president and LAFC general manager, John Thorrington, who has been always so gracious to join us here. Thanks for joining us again, John. I imagine uh, the excitement is pretty palpable. Jersey launch, stadiums ready to rock, and everything's falling into place. Yeah, certainly. Pleasure to be with you as always, Max. And... Yeah, there's certainly a lot of excitement around the building. We had the amazing event Saturday night with the launch of the the New Jersey. It's still, and I said it in person on stage alongside you, it's still, it shouldn't surprise me because every time we have an event, everybody shows, I call it, show it all, shows all the way up. It shouldn't surprise me, yet it still blows my mind, the the affinity and the connection our, our supporters have with our players, with, with the club, it's just remarkable and kind of resets perspective at a great time as we head into what we hope will be an exciting 2024. I'm with you. I think that put uh, that charged up a lot of people. And uh, I, I feel the same expectations when you go there, but you don't assume anything. And to see this line yeah. meander out all the way down to Figueroa from the stadium, stadium was tremendous. So there's a lot of excitement for the, the new season, which came very quickly. Uh, MLS rules in place where you, the season for LAFC went to the very end. So you had a roughly a six week off season. Um, how is, how did you approach that knowing the tight confines and obviously approaching a season where we were going to have um, turnover for the club? Yeah, it was, we worked as quickly as we could and that started before the final even in terms of discussion and, and roster planning, we always are very proactive in that sense. And then it's a question of getting all these contingency plans in place and then controlling what you can control, which is a part of the equation. But then certainly when you're talking about outbound moves, there's the player, there's the other team. And, and sometimes those can, can take some time. And I think what we saw overall, I think we were, more impacted than some others because us and Columbus played in well into December, but it was a relatively stagnant market. And I think what you, what you see all over the world is there is a trickle down effect. And I think it was a, you know, in recent history, the quietest market, you know, I think COVID aside that, that we've seen. And so there was a lot of things. It was fairly stagnant and almost stuck, which, which took some time to get the deals we needed to do, in order to create the space to improve the team in the ways we have. So it was, it was frustrating in terms of the amount of work that went into it. And I think you saw there was such a flurry of announcements, but those deals had been in place or sorry, not in place, but in the works for a number of weeks, it was, and you know, I've been on record saying this is the busiest off season we've had that I can remember. I would say maybe, if the expansion year was close to it when we had to sign 28 players, but it was a lot of work. And I'm just so grateful to the scouts, the staff, the data analysts, uh, the work that they put in through the holidays. It was, it, it was a real grind, but you know, we do it. We do it with pleasure knowing that, you know, that the, the fruit of our labor will be shown starting Saturday. 
And uh, I remember you addressed everyone here at the Performance Center and all of a sudden the, the flurry of activity that you spoke about how you were dealing with all off season came into view. I would like to ask you about these players that will be now joining this black and gold group for the 2024 season. I want to start with a familiar face in Eduardo Tuesta, who is the first returning player. And I, I imagine that's very valuable for a club, especially a young club like uh, LAFC. Yeah, I think for us, it was interesting doing the press conference the other day, and I was reflecting on the appropriate words. And we'll get to some of these guys, I know, but we had we had different categories and types of players that were coming. And this was a, a new one for us in that we were welcoming a previous star. And Edward, you know, is on stage alongside these other players that are sort of at the beginning of that journey that we had with Edward. And so to welcome him back, it was, you know, an opportunity that, that came up due to circumstance in Brazil that I was not necessarily expecting, but it does go to show you, you know, Edward's experience here and you can just see the joy on his face to come back and saying how much it feels like home on, as a result of his experience here. And, and, and we certainly, know his quality on the field. He's now grown up. I see a lot more leadership in him now. I think he's been hardened by the the years in, in Brazil and matured in a way that, that is great to see. And I know, I know we'll, we'll benefit our group and he's just got so much quality. He's got so much knowledge about how we play. So the onboarding with Edward was non-existent. He, he's already onboarded and, we're incredibly grateful to have him. And yeah, our expectations for Edward is that he'll be one of the top midfielders in the league as he was when he left. And not only playing in Brazil, but playing for, I don't know if you can say arguably the best club in South America in Palmeiras. I had some injury issues there, but was a, a guy who made it into that squad for Libertadores International Competition. So a great experience. I love the word uh, hardened because I think certainly you'll see that. Yeah. in a different player. I, I was at Coachella and this was before the announcement. There were some uh, rumors swirling that he could come back and I saw multiple Atuesta jerseys. And I just, if you could maybe reflect on uh, obviously looking for your core group of players from last season, and they are certainly there, but a guy that can, can come in and provide that familiarity on the field, in the stands, how beneficial is that to you guys? Yeah, I mean, we've stayed, I've stayed in touch with Edward since he left and certainly wished him well. And in the games he was playing, I remember watching him play in the Club World Cup for Palmeiras. And, you know, th this, this journey that we take with these players, and it's hard for me to not sound overly paternal, but I would just call it a level of connectedness. And our supporters feel it with Edward as well. So to see him come back, is, is certainly just incredibly exciting for us. I think what he brings on the field is a, is a level of versatility. He play all three positions in midfield to great effect. He's just got unique tools, I think, in our league to be able to play how we play um, so effectively. And, you know, as we were going through the process and I, and I was looking back at some of the stats and – remembering and watching some of those moments you know in previous in 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 edward's previous stint with us and as a holding midfielder he was second all time for lafc in assists which that's i don't think there is any holding midfielder where you can say that would be true with that sample size it is it's just incredible the impact he had on us obviously he was best 11 and i actually think edward's a better player now and i think he's more mature and, and we'll certainly see the benefit of, of Edwards' return immediately. Brilliant. And holding midfielders, obviously, with Ilya Sanchez becoming a real calling card for LAC. And we all know what a valuable position mm -hmm. that is on the field. I, I want to go to Hugo Lloris next. And I don't want to bury the lead because this is a, a, was, is, and will remain a blockbuster move. And, you know, when, when we're doing video presentations or I'm preparing to do uh, something around Hugo and you look at these credentials, it just blows your mind. 
uh, the, uh, the level of player. Um, it's been well documented about his arrival here and uh, some of the conversations you had to get that excitement. But um, now that he is here, what have you seen how he has been able to settle into the club and the responsibility that he is going to take in 2024? Yeah, I can offer already, despite it being a short period of time, a number of examples. I'll, I'll key in on a couple. And I think what I noticed when I met Ugo is his humility. And I think human nature typically tends towards thinking more or more rather than less of yourself. And he's the opposite. And I think you see this hunger that despite all he has achieved and accomplished, this real hunger to do more. And he's welcomed that challenge here at LAFC to do something different. I think he has, I don't want to call it unique because certainly there are other goalkeepers who, who have this quality as well, but his ability to lead from that position is remarkable. And we've already seen it in our, in our preseason matches. We see the, the influence he has within the group. And I, I still can, I mean, the, the game against Chicago in particular just really sticks out in my mind because in preseason, I'm a little bit closer to the group and I could hear his, the accountability he introduces, the encouragement he, and, and you can see guys respond really well to him. And he is just an absolute class act on the field and off the field. And I think what's remarkable is with those credentials you mentioned, he's still hungry for more and and is an incredibly humble guy who the first question he asks every day is what does the team need from me today and he's he he's just a, a fantastic guy and we are grateful to have him you uh appeased the or you you pleased the lafc fan base and then you got the interest of the international football world with google Lloris, and then with omar campos as you were in search of a fullback uh, was able to bend the ear of the uh, the Mexican media, and I, I'm sure you've had many questions. He's a highly regarded guy uh, playing there at Santos and now going to be uh, a high-profile Mexican player, a young one at that, playing here in Major League Soccer. Um, what would be the expectations for him and how much uh, responsibility do you think he's going to take, certainly early in 2024? Yeah, so it was very clear. We just mentioned the goalkeeper, and it was clear that – we were not going to be able to come to terms with Cheeky and, and the options he had. And, and obviously we wish him well in, in Brazil. But once that became clear, we knew it was a position of, of priority. And so we looked at hundreds of options of a young left back that we thought could come in and is not, not, not only a, a player for the future, but somebody that at a young age could come in and have an impact now. And, and Omar quickly rose to the top of that list. It was a complicated negotiation at first because, you know, players like him are not easy to pry away from their, their club. I do credit Santos throughout and we, we did have um, some, uh, some, some, some disagreements within the negotiation on valuations and things like that, but we're really grateful that we were able to see eye to eye. And yeah, for me, Omar is a player who's, personal ambition and what I would love to see for him is to become the left back from Mexico. I really do think he has that potential. And the only way he does that is through strong performances with LAFC, which I'm confident he will have. He, he fits how we play. He's very good going forward. We've already seen a number of attacking actions that have led to goals and chances that have come through Omar. He's fast. He's his physical profile. He's fit. He can run. He's quick. He's good on the ball. And we certainly think is was it was the right decision and and a player we have high hopes for moving forward. Maybe not as much fanfare, but I've been speaking to a lot of MLS journalists and they've asked me about Tomas, Tommy Angel and about what he is capable of doing. Also a very young player, but savvy and played in some important competitions. Of course, uh, his father, Juan Pablo Angel, but, you know, certainly a short time I had a chance to talk with him eager to get out of that shadow and show what he could do, which he has started to prove. What has impressed you about uh, the young English Colombian, uh, English born yeah. Colombian player who now is going to call LAFC home? English born Colombian who lived in. Speaks better English than me. Yeah, lived in LA. <laughs> yeah, so 
Tommy is has known about LAFC from its inception, and he actually was at our final last year in in Columbus, and it was very clear he was excited to join, despite a number of options that that he did have. I think Tommy is a an attacker with some versatility and a skill set that we think we can utilize very well. He's he's a very mature young man. He's played in a number of big games, both for Colombia's national teams, as well as Atletico Nacional, which is is a big, big club, arguably the biggest club. I, I'll probably offend some of our players if I say that. So I will say some would say the biggest club in, in Colombia, big South American competition, Colombian competition has scored goals and been very successful. And so we think that once Tommy gets up to speed and learns the system that he will be certainly an asset and and again is similar to to Omar and as I referenced Edward part one is one of these young players that we at LAFC in addition to the Hugo Lorises and and these other players are young players we invest in and would love to see grow here at LAFC the final new player and the winner the hits keep on coming uh John and each one individually so interesting from our perspective, I'm sure, obviously your perspective, but the fan base, the media, and that's a uh, David Martinez, who I th think just turned 18. It was announced that he was going to join LAFC, and moments later, he had a game against, I believe it was Argentina in the Olympic qualifying, and he, everyone got to see firsthand what he is capable of. Yeah. Obviously, a young player, and I will, I'll, I'll let you say, it, but I would imagine a guy you want to bring along slowly into the fold, but just talent wise, when you think of a prospect like that, where does he rank? Very highly in terms of young prospects globally. And he did, we were lucky we signed him just before that game because I know <laughs> his, his options increased. Good timing's even, everything. <laughs> even further, exactly right. But no, an incredible talent. He's got, he, uh, he, he moves very well with the ball. He's got very good soccer IQ for his young age. He's goal dangerous. He can run with the ball. He can unbalance defense with his uh, defenders, with his passing, with his movement, with his dribbling. And certainly somebody we're really excited about, particularly with how we play with our wingers. And in a fluid front three, we felt very good uh, that we were able to secure his signing. He did just turn 18. He, he will be in market this week, which is really exciting. Obviously, unlike our other players who needed a full preseason, uh, he's already in, in has match fitness on account of the, the Olympic qualifying that he played into great effect for Venezuela. So we're really excited to welcome him. I, you know, I, I, I'm not one of these guys that feels the need to temper excitement or expectations. <laughs> He'll come here and if he's good enough and shows in training that he's ready, he'll play. And we've always been brave to play young players at this club. And we, we certainly think that he has the potential to make an immediate impact. Well, that's exciting to hear. And in that Olympic qualifying tournament as a 17 year old, he was playing against 20, 21, 22 yeah. year olds and looked pretty comfortable in that role. Uh, we were at the stadium last week and I was alongside you. I imagine you had to field, uh, a dozen, if not more, questions about Carlos Vela. I mean, what is, how has that been like? We we know there's a possibility, but about where uh, maybe that uh, situation is. Yeah, uh, certainly did receive a few questions, and it's understandable. Carlos has been the face of our organization, and I'm going to do my best to ensure that that remains the case. Um, and hopeful we can figure something out. Um and uh, I'll keep trying until I can't. And yeah, we, we certainly from ownership, myself, the team, the coaches all appreciate what Carlos has done. And I hope there is more to the story of Carlos and LAFC. Look forward to seeing how that plays out. Uh, now let's real quickly before I let you go, John, we get ready for the opening game of the season. Not too shabby, LAFC Sounders. So it's pretty easy to get excited for that one. Wasn't that long ago uh, a famous win uh, mm -hmm. at uh, at their place up in Seattle as part of the Western Conference semifinal? And now this latest chapter. What what have you seen from the Sounders? But what is more importantly this matchup mean to LAFC as it gets older and wiser and 
those kind of matchups stick out over a, over a season? Yeah, I think it's, I don't, I don't compare it to our rivalry with the galaxy. I think that has a proximity and a, a feel and dynamic to it that is different. I think this rivalry is more of a competitive one. And I think great level of respect for, for the Sounders and their organization and the success they've had. They set the bar in the Western Conference prior to us joining the league. And since us joining the league, they've had, they've won trophies. They've been consistently successful. And I think that's the hardest thing to do in our league. And I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I think the statistics would bear out that we've been neck and neck since the beginning of our existence in MLS in 2018. And they, they've they been, you know, I, I think going back to that, they've been a nemesis in the playoffs. And so that felt cathartic in many ways to go to Seattle, which is a really tough place to play. Uh, you know, we had lost there. Uh, we lost at home to them in our historic record setting year in 2019, which did not feel good. So um, it's a very healthy competition. And I think it's one based in a lot of respect that the two organizations have for one another on the technical staff, the players, you could see it. Um, and, and I think we've had a lot of classic encounters and it's the first time we've opened at home against them. If, you know, we opened our first ever game was in Seattle uh, which was the other time we did win 1-0 there, which was which was fantastic. So we, there's been a lot of history in in the six years, and uh, we're excited to go and test ourselves against them because they always are, you know, incredibly high level of co competition. Well, John, I think we all saw uh, at the Jersey launch the excitement palpable for the LAFC fan base that will only continue. Uh, to see all the scenes on Saturday as they prepare the Seattle Sounders. You can see it at MLS Season Pass on Apple TV. And we're set sail. It's going to be a much different season than last year. Obviously, it's not going to have that, that heavy run of games at the beginning. You, you've, got to be, you've got to be happy about that. I mean, you obviously want to play in all the competitions, but it, it'll, it'll test you a little differently, different muscles here to begin 2024. Yeah, yeah I think it's uh... – I don't want to say I'm grateful we're not in the Champions League because that wouldn't be the case. We That's a competition we want to be in every year. But will we exploit the fact that we will not have that heavy load of games? Yes. And and it did. It does change our recruitment strategy a little bit this offseason. And I think it affords us time to make really good decisions moving forward. There are more announcements to come on the, on the player front. and And we're excited to have this team – the team that we have right now is certainly capable of success. And then as we as we analyze what the team needs moving forward, we'll be able to be positioned to add to that in ways that will help bring us more trophies. Great stuff. I'm glad I got to ask that. It was a great answer. So, uh, John, all the best this season in 2024. And we'll be there along with you for the ride. Thank you, Max. Uh, thanks for joining us at Inside LAFC. John Thorington, we are off and running with Inside LAFC Podcast. We'll be here every week with some incredible content getting you as close as possible to LAFC with some very special guests as well. Enjoy the game against Seattle. We'll join you next week.